Okay, everyone. So in the last video, I got very passionate about dagger and why we need it. And today we're going to set up some dagger stuff. Now, if you haven't used dependency injection libraries before, essentially they are a way of telling the system it's a spec, but you tell the library how to structure your dependencies. So uh, let's say, okay, let me rephrase that. You need to tell the library how to create your dependency instances and what each one depends on. Because if you don't, your um, the dagger library can't figure everything out. You know, it's not magic. It can't know the constructor arguments. It doesn't know whether to use the builder or not. So we're going to need to move code around and structure things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a dagger graph is what it's called. It's, it's called a graph to create a GitHub service and Picasso instance. That's all we care about. So all the internal dependencies, uh, OK HTTP client, the Timber instance, I actually have the singleton so we can leave that be, our logging interceptor, our JSON thing, our retrofit. Uh, we actually are missing one here. I've, I needed to create this. So we need to say file. Uh, we're just going to quickly create a cache store. File uh, get cache store. Uh, string child, which will be cache, uh, I'll make dirs, and then we say cache, cache, a uh, booger. Uh, I imported the wrong class, hang on a second. Yeah, Picasso has its own internal cache. We need to use the OK HTTP cache. That's the one. New cache, which takes a file. Okay. Might want to do that first. Cache file, max size, we'll say 10 megabytes. So then just put a comment in, 10 megabyte cache. So this is our network cache, which we'll talk, which would be sitting on that. So this is where things get cached, okay? And then we need to set this. If you don't set this, by the way, by default, on an OK HTTP client, um, nothing gets cached, so you'll always talk to the network. So caching headers become moot. A lot of people don't know that. So we've got a lot of dependencies here. Let's start structuring them into groups, because this is how Dagger kind of works. You can sort of group your dependencies together. Well, we can create a GitHub, we can group them into Picasso, network. So network would kind of encompass this area here. So let's do that. So this is our network group. Um, our JSON instance will actually sit down here. So this will be our client group, okay? Uh, we'll have a Picasso group because it kind of makes sense to have a Picasso group. Okay, so we'll have three groups. Um, so our network group will also encompass our interceptor. Uh, we have a few usages of context floating around here, so we're going to have to have a group for context. And we'll see how that works with Dagger in a minute, how we can pass in external dependencies. So we'll have a context group. Ah, I'm losing track of my typing. So we'll just set this up like so, so we can make things a little clearer as we go forward. Yep, context. Okay, so we've got our four groups. So we've grouped our things logically together. Uh, generally, you group on branches in the tree. So if we go back up to our little tree structure here, we're taking Picasso and the OK HTTP downloader into one group retrofit the github service into another group so when the branches sort of merge back together is where we're going to take this so these both talk to ok http so this here becomes another group here so we've got one group here we've got one group here and we've got one group here and that's the general kind of structure you want so let's actually get into using dagger itself well 
first thing we need to do is we need to create a new interface. And this is our component. So the component is the sort of public UI or the pub, sorry, public UI, what am I saying? It's the public interface to your dependency graph. So what we want to do is we only want to expose the GitHub service and Picasso instances to the world. All the internal stuff should be kept internal. We don't want that stuff flying off into the sunset. We don't want people who use our graph or our dependency graph to know about the file, the client, and that. that should all just be automatic and under the hood. So let's create our GitHub application component. Okay, and it's an interface. This is great. Well, Dagger doesn't know what this interface is. It'll just ignore it. We need to give it an annotation. So the annotation we're going to use is called at component. So this is what Dagger will use to uh, detect this annotation and knows how to, to, okay, this class is part of Dagger. I need to do something. Great. But we've got a bit of a problem. There's nothing here. This class doesn't relate back to our GitHub application in any way. And basically, if this is our public interface to our graph, well, we have to tell the, the graph what to generate, what dependencies, what, what this graph actually cares about. And there's two things we care about, our GitHub service and our Picasso instance. So we'll just get, create a method called get Picasso. Because it's an interface, we don't want to fill in any of these methods. And then we'll create one called GitHub service. Great. This is really good. So basically what happens now is when we build this, Dagger will generate an instance of the component. And we'll look at this goes, oh, this is a Dagger component. It will generate an instance of this. So it will actually subclass this and generate a subclass by itself. We'll have a look into it in a minute. It's a, and that, this, in, this um, uh, component, this subclass says, I need to provide Picasso instances and I need to provide a GitHub service instance, which is really good. But where does it get those from? Because Dagger can't magically generate all this stuff. We have all this configuration. We don't want certain things. We do want certain things. It's this big problem. So this is where modules come into play. Now, modules are those groupings we assigned earlier. So we're going to have a context module, a network module, a Picasso module, and a GitHub service module. In fact, we'll actually separate these into two smaller modules. We'll create a JSON module as well. Because if you've got multiple network clients, you want to separate, you want to use the same JSON across them all. So let's do that. Let's create our modules. So we're going to create a new class and we're going to call this um, our first module, which will be our GitHub service module. Great. Well, Dagger doesn't know about this, so we can just say at module. Now Dagger knows that this is a module class. Really fantastic. So let's create our first method, public uh, GitHub service. And we just call it a method GitHub service. It doesn't really matter. So this method needs to return a GitHub service. This is where the GitHub service here will go from. So when Dagger generates this, it will talk to this module and it'll go, tell me what you need and to provide this thing. Now I've got a bit of a catch here. Dagger can't actually bridge component to module correctly and it never will. So we need to tell the component which module to use. So up here we need to say modules equals GitHub service module dot class. Fantastic. So now the at component is telling we're telling the component this in order to generate this instance, in order to generate the code to create this instance, you need a GitHub service module, which we have right here. So let's start moving our code over. 
So if we get our GitHub service, this is the code that creates that. I have accidentally hit myself, I hit the wrong key. And we'll just return here, okay? Oh, no, no, we're missing the retrofit. What do we do? Well, we need to move the retrofit in here. And the retrofit's missing more parts. So this is where the actual connection of dependencies go. So this retrofit is a separate thing altogether. So what we can do is we can say public, we'll say retrofit. And we'll move the retrofit code in here. This is a separate dependency. Retrofit is separate to the GitHub service. That's great. Uh, the problem now is Dagger can't join this to this. So we need to tell it that this GitHub service depends on retrofit. So you do that by passing in an argument like this. And that is how it works. Now, of course, Dagger, we don't want Dagger to read every method. What happens if we have extra methods in our module that don't actually inject anything? That's why on every single method that provides a dependency or provides dependencies to other dependencies, you need the at provides an annotation. So that's that done. Really good. Problem is, retrofit requires OKHTTP OK client. Well, we'll create an OKHTTP OK client parameter. And it requires JSON, so we'll just say JSON, JSON. Perfect. So now, Retrofit has all its dependencies. The problem is, if we try and build this, actually we will build it. When we build this, it will complain. See, Dagger is giving us an error here. Picasso cannot be provided without a provides method or an inject constructor. OK, HTTP3 client. So that's from uh, here. So GitHub service is complaining. We, we need this. So let's create a new module. So we're going to create a new module called a network. We'll annotate it with app module again. And we'll provide our OK, HTTP instance. And then we'll move our code over here. So this is our OKHTTP OK instance. And we'll just use return on this. And we need the interceptor and the cache. So all you need to annotate this with that provides. So let's create our uh, interceptor. So public uh, HTTP, uh, what's it? HTTP logging interceptor. Logging interceptor. So we need to move this creation code here over. And you can see how we're slowly but surely pulling all the code into one place. Okay, that's great. So we now need to add our HTTP logging interceptor here. That's brilliant. We're missing our cache. So we need to do another app provides. By the way, the order of these methods doesn't matter. You can put them in any order so long as they're all there. Uh, public cache cache and then we've got back to our application. Our cache oh, I required a cache file. Wow. So we're gonna need a file. Okay, cache file. I actually did that wrong. Uh, you'll see now in a sec what I did wrong, but I just need to move this code into here. Okay, return. Oh, we need a context. So we have that, and then we have a file. Cache file, that's great. So then we can now put the cache in here beside the interceptor. 
There we go. So now we've got a nice dependency structure. So I've got our logging interceptor, which comes from here, because the types are exactly the same. Uh, we have a cache and cache. By the way, Dagger does not handle uh, subtypes. That's something to be aware of. Um, if this was just interceptor, it won't pick up the HTTP logging interceptor. It needs to be the exact same name. And before you think about it, Dagger does have uh, qualifiers. We'll get to those in a minute, which is where you've got, let's say you've got, you're injecting two files. Which one does it talk to? We'll get to that. So this is great. We have a bit of a problem though. We are missing a context. Now we can't create a context instance, can we? That's called an external dependency to the graph, which means the graph has dependencies externally. So we'll talk about that in the next episode, guys.